Listening is something we develop when we become aware that our greatest ally is our body. And because our body speaks to us, it gives us feedback on, you know, um, I eat this and this happens, or I, uh, I touch, from the ch time we are children, when we learn about fire, or, what, or about falling, or about, this is how we learn to listen to our body. And as we grow older and are pulled away from our body and into a highly intellectual world, uh, we stop developing the ability to listen to our body. I would say continuing to listen to our body is one of the most important practices we need to do every day, which is why um, something like, I, I would say something like dancing is important because you are using your body in motion and you're learning what feels right, what feels pleasurable, what feels beautiful, um, or powerful, or any of these. But you can listen to your body regardless of that. You can listen to your body anytime you are triggered by a certain uh, situation or the way you interpret external stimuli. You listen to your thoughts, you listen to your emotions. You ask yourself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? How do I understand this moment? How do I live with uh, the way that I interpret certain events or certain information? And so when you start to understand that you can take this at a surface level or you can go even deeper and um, train your listening even more, then, um, then you start to understand that truly it's uh, an amazing, our body is, uh, it has an awareness that is beyond our own, of course, our own conscious awareness, and it is highly, highly intelligent. And so I started to respect this intelligence, and so I started to listen even deeper. I thought, okay, I need to pay attention. <laughs> And um, that's when uh, I also started to understand that um, I can enjoy the body in ways that I hadn't previously explored. One of the greatest joys right now in my life is dancing tango, Argentine tango. It is truly an amazing experience. And it's also, it's, it's a spiritual experience because the body is a spiritual experience. Um, <laughs> Really, it's, uh, it's highly spiritual. So all of this, when we start to practice this and be mindful about uh, the body and experience that the body is constantly giving us feedback, that's how we listen and that's how we have a conversation with our own body. And then that's how we can actually start reading other people's bodies because we learn from doing it with our own body. And so we start learning how the other person is carrying anxiety or where they're carrying anxiety or where they are, how they're feeling pleasure, if they're happy, if they're sad. Um, everything about the body is always uh, dialoguing with us, our own and another person's body. So we become experts at reading people <laughs> if we are able to read our own. Silence is very important. We don't value it enough in our daily life. We need to be alone a lot and in quiet. We need quiet time and alone time, and most people nowadays are too busy to have that in their lives. But it is the principal conduit for contemplation. And contemplation is how you learn to listen. It's, uh, it's also how you learn to enjoy life to the fullest, because then you appreciate every moment. 
when you contemplate, uh, it automatically puts you in a frame of mind where you are quiet with yourself and you can ask yourself the deeper questions of life and the simple questions of how you feel, what you think about. This is what happens when, when, you, when you meditate, but it can happen when you contemplate with your eyes open or being out in nature, simply thinking quietly to yourself. So make sure you have moments of silence and moments of doing nothing because doing nothing is one of the most important things we can do in life. <laughs> really doing nothing. <laughs>